Hey guys, OJL Biden here, bringing you guys our GDL Season 1 Draft Analysis. Yes, a draft analysis for a Wi-Fi league. Nonetheless, we're finally bringing some Wi-Fi draft content to the channel. I am super, super, super excited for this league. I have a really fun team, and I think we're going to have a great season. Um, you know, that's all to be uh, seen, though. But first, I did want to give a shout-out to uh, Six Foot Hacks and Aaron 2420 they are running this league and they asked me to play in it. So obviously, huge shout out to them. I really do appreciate um, the opportunity to play in the league and all that stuff. Um, and then last housekeeping thing, I know you see a GIF there and the face cam thing. Uh, usually we do have face cam, but for some reason, um, my computer is being extra awful than it already is. I mean, it's already kind of a potato, but it's being extra awful today. So um, anytime I try to record this with face cam, it was lagging. Uh, to the point where it's like infuriating to watch. I would have punched my computer screen if I was watching me uh, with how I'm doing is lagging. So we just threw on a stun fist there. Um, it'll probably be lagging too, but I figure a GIF kind of lagging a little bit when it's mostly stationary anyways. Isn't the biggest deal in the world opposed to seeing me move at like one frame per second. So um, yeah, with that being said, let's jump right into the draft analysis. Um, we had a lower end pick. I forget exactly where we were at. Um, I want to say we were the eighth pick. It was eight or seven. Um, so my goal going into this draft, obviously, um, as I take with most drafts I'm in, is going to be to grab the best Pokemon I see left on the board, the most, the Pokemon I want to build around the most, and kind of go from there and build around it after. And round one, it got around to me. Unfortunately, I was super low, so I'm not going to get anything busted like you know some uh, Galardon, some Dragapult, uh, some Age Slash, anything crazy like that. But uh, I looked and Gengar was still there. Uh, so I, I snagged up. I've been wanting to try Gengar and Gen 8 Draft um, for a minute now. I mean, I guess as soon as it come out, because if you didn't know, uh, Gengar RVC still has all the great tools that it had in previous generations, being its nice 110 speed tier, which is great, the Generation 8 meta, where things are either really fast or really slow. It gives me that 110 speed mon, obviously, which is great. 130 special attack, which is great. It's going to absolutely nuke things with its dual stab of Ghost and Poison. Uh, but that's going to be the middle lord Gengar. It's going to absolutely wall break. It's going to hit opponents hard with either Scarf Spec Set, um, a Life Warp, you know, stuff like that, obviously. Gengar is going to hit like an absolute truck. So I'm um, really excited to use that. It has great coverage and access to Dazzling Gleam, Energy Ball. Focus Blast is a very, very big one. Um, Giga Drain can be nice, you know, stuff like that. Has access to great utility in Parish Song and Will O Wisp and uh, Taunt and uh, Trick. So, a bunch of options there. It's a poison type, grounded poison, so we'll be able to absorb toxic spikes and we'll be able to throw toxins of our own because toxic is a much, much lower distributed move here in Generation 8. So, it's obviously nice having them all, but that option to throw off a toxic. And, uh, you know, whittle something down over time if we can't initially break through it very hard. But the main reason I really wanted to try Gengar isn't necessarily what's going to set it over the top. And I really don't think it, like, breaks Gengar or anything. It's a, it's a very niche thing. I think it's much better in League than it is on the ladder. Um, but finally, you know, saying what that actually is, that's going to be Nasty Plot. I think Gengar with Nasty Plot is really, really cool. Most of the time, you're not really going to find the opportunity. I'm going to be honest. You're not going to really find the opportunity to set up that Nasty Plot because despite its decent defensive typing, uh, Gengar is pretty darn frail. It is not the bulkiest thing in the world. That's to say the least. But in specific matchups, if you can position yourself well, if I can get some screens up, if I can force a switch, you know, if I, uh, you know, throw on a resist barrier to, you know, guarantee take that hit that we need to, we've eliminated Scarfers, we've gotten up webs, hint, hint, um, something like that. Nasty Plot Gengar is a threat, dude. At plus two, not much in the game is going to really be able to switch around this thing. Um, you can try and pivot around it, maybe revenge it with a faster mod or Scarfer. Other than that, you're in for a world of hurt if Gengar gets up a plus two nasty plot, uh, a nasty plot off, and is able to throw off moves freely without, uh, you know, being twisted with an item with specs or something like that. So, really, really excited to use Gengar. Something I wanted to emphasize, obviously, with Gengar is finding opportunities in the niche to get in for free. So I wanted some nice Volturn offens. I wanted nice pivots into potential checks for Gengar and things like that. Um, so with my next pick, it was a modern tier two that I was really, really looking to try out uh, before Home comes out. When it, or, or not before Home comes out, before its hidden ability comes out, which most people are assuming is going to be Pokemon Home because with the Generation Seven starters, um, they're you know hidden abilities got released via 
Pokemon Bank. So people are thinking that the Hidden Village for the Gen 8 starters are probably going to be releasing home. That's not a guaranteed thing. But nonetheless, I did want to try this mod out before it did get into Hidden Ability because when it does, it's going to be busted. But I still think it's very, very good nonetheless without it. And that's going to be Cinderace. Very, very excited to use Cinderace. It gives me a really, really fast one. Because um, like I said earlier, there's not, you know, the best options when it comes to speed in Generation 8. But this does hit 119, so this is that nice, uh, you know, 115 plus speed tier. So we'll speed other base 110s and uh, will be, you know, a really, really strong threat um, from the physical side. But that very, very great speed tier. Like I said before, Hidden Ability is not released and we're not playing on Showdown, obviously. So we are going to be stuck with Blaze and Race. Nonetheless, I still think it's a very, very good Pokemon in Tier 2. We have access to Bulk Up for setup. Uh, Pyro Ball is an incredibly spammable move. Nice, what is it, 120 base power, I think Pyro Ball is? Yeah, 120 base power, 90 accuracy, but we'll be able to work around it. Uh, low Kick and High Jump Kick for fighting coverage. It has access to U-Turn for Momentum, which is amazing. It has access to Gunk Shot, Iron Heads, and Headbutt. There's still decent coverage physically. Uh, quick Attack for Priority as well as Sucker Punch. It has access to a Fast Taunt, which is amazing for us. Um, flame Charge to boost up our speed as well as Agility. We have Baton Pass if we don't want to uh, U-Turn out. I completely forget what the Baton Pass rolls on this, despite me absolutely hating Baton Pass. I probably should. I'll kind of look that up a little bit. But like I said, access to bulk up as well. And it has access to a really, really cool move that I really do want to try out in Court Change, which actually switches the sides of the field effects, which is going to be, um, you know, your entry hazard, your stealth rock, your toxic spikes, spikes, sticky web, all that good stuff. If we can get in our heavy duty boot cinderace and click um, Court Change, we are we're essentially invalidating hazard stack with this with this mod in my opinion. It really does make it hard to justify bring hazard stack if all we have to do is click one button. Um, that's pretty much guaranteed with boots and um, you know getting this in thing incorrectly because it is so fast. It's hard to outspeed it and knock it out before it gets off that port change. At the very least, we'll be able to control the hazard game with this thing phenomenally. Like it's going to be really great. Um, you know, controlling the hazards. You know, you turning out, throwing off big pyro balls, maybe going with the bulk up set one week. I am very, very excited for Cinderace. I think it's going to be an amazing tier two, despite not having that hidden ability. It's going to be incredibly strong, incredibly fast, and it's going to prove a lot of utility. It's going to get Gengar in for free on those U-turns, which is obviously super, super dope. We don't break bulky waters very well with Cinderace. Um, we actually barely touch them at all, especially without our Protean. Throwing off those Protean U-turns, it's going to be a lot harder to ship them down, but hopefully we can circumvent that with the rest of our team. Obviously, Gengar, um, you know, depending on how passive that bulky water is, maybe we come in and set up a nasty pot with Gengar in that situation. So, we'll see how it goes. Or throw off an energy ball slash thunderbolt, something like that. So, yeah, that's going to be Cinderace. Very, very excited to use this mod. Despite it being my least favorite Gen, uh, Gen 8 starter design-wise, I think it's going to be great, um, this Gen, when it comes to draft. Next up, I ended up drafting Togekiss. I wanted to nab my fairy type. They were all going pretty, pretty fast at this point. So I figured grabbing mine would be great. It gives me that nice 80 speed tier, which is uh, honestly good. It's good to have those middling speed tiers to be able to, um, you know, kind of patch those around and make it to where your opponent can't run, you know, modest on their base 85 mods and stuff like that, which is obviously super, super nice. Tokus with the Serene Grace ability, throwing off those Scarf Air Slashes. Uh, I don't like to bring it too, too often, just simply because I really think you're underutilizing Togekiss if you're bringing Scarf every week. But if we need to, we definitely will. We'll throw off big air slashes. Has access to Baton Pass. If uh, Dry Pass is a ban, I will definitely use that as a momentum grabber. It's obviously super nice. We have access to Ore Sphere, Flamethrower, and Fire Blast for those Steel types that might want to come in and uh, do us some trouble there. Dazzling Gleam, obviously, for our Fairy Staff. Access to Nasty Plot. It does not have Roost this generation yet which sucks that definitely does really suck but it does have access to morning sun which is a much worse roost but it does heal our hp by 50 percent most of the time nonetheless and we also have access to wish so this gives us a wish passer for our fat that we might want to draft uh, later on access to encore um, like i said nasty plot uh it's a screen setter in reflect and i believe like yeah this light screen as well we can also throw off thunder waves and just be really really annoying trick a scarf to something Togekiss is just a very, very solid mod. It's a great glue to a team. And I think it was really important to grab a good fairy because there aren't too many this gen. And um, I figured this would be a really solid pick for us to um, nap early. Guess that flying type as well, that ground immunity. And yeah, that's going to be Togekiss. However, if you look at my team right now, we are incredibly edge, edge quake weak. Uh, Gengar is going to drop to 95% earthquakes that are coming out. 
Cinderace as well, not going to appreciate him. And Togekiss is not going to appreciate like a uh, ground type getting up an SD and throwing off a big stone edge. So we're definitely going to have to circumvent that. And I really wanted to do so in my next pick to kind of help out with that. So we ended up grabbing Rotom Mo. Now, I really think Rotom Mo fits this team phenomenally. Not only does it give us that Edgequake switch in, um, being neutral to the, uh, you know, the rock type moves that want to come out and being immune, obviously, to those ground type moves, it gives us a great pivot into bulky waters and it gives us a great way of breaking those bulky waters for our Cinderace that we drafted back in round two. Um, being able to pivot in on those throw big free volt switches and it's a volt switcher that does not necessarily want to invite in grounds all the time simply because they fear that either that big leaf storm coming out or they fear that will wish not really wanting to get burned. So Rotom is an, uh, it's it's an amazing, amazing pivot. I love using Rotom Mo. I forget which league I had in the past, most recently. I think it was Academy Season 2. But I really, really like Rotom this generation. Um, despite losing Defog, I got a new toy in Nasty Plot. And I think that's great for this thing. Uh, being able to, throw up, to get up a Nasty Plot and throw a plus 2 Leaf Storm off that base 10, what is it, 105 special attack is not going to tickle. And it makes it to where we're not, uh, you know, down to that minus 2 special attack after a big Leaf Storm. And that just dual stab is really, really solid and hitting a lot of things neutrally and super effectively, which is obviously super, super clean. Another dual screen setter. Uh, you know, access to will o -Wisp and Thunder Wave. No more Toxic this gen, which has been annoying, but Foul Play just not physical setup as well. Um, you know, just a, just an overall amazing mod. I really do like Rotom. I think it was a great pick first in Tier 3. I think it synergizes with our um, first three amazingly. It gives us a great Volt Turn combo in Cinderace plus Rotom Mo. Uh, really being able to put teams in that Vortex, and it just gives us great defensive synergy with Togekiss and stuff like uh, Togekiss and Cinderace and Gengar and stuff like that. So I really think... Rotom was a great pickup for us. Unfortunately, our last two mods, which previously had defog, do not have defog anymore. So we're gonna have to find some hazard control in another way. Uh, but I think we can do so down the road. Speaking of which, we dipped into tier four with our next pick and we secured ourselves a big ol' Avalug. I think Avalug has amazing defensive utility this generation. Uh, being one of the best Galar Darn checks in the game, which yes, I am 100% drafting a Galar Darn check so I don't just outright lose to it on preview. Uh, this thing can chew hits from it. I believe we can avoid a two hit KO from Scarf Flare Blitz. I know Bandage it blows, but I don't know if we 100% avoid that. But you know, obviously it, it uh, plays mind games with our opponent half you're walk into that move. I think this mod is very much so necessary because look at Galar Darn and look at the rest of our team prior to this. We didn't really appreciate it at all. So um, Avalog is obviously great for that. Has access to Rapid Spin, which is amazing for us. Uh, like I said, we had no hazard control with this team yet. And uh, Rotom doesn't appreciate taking rocks, both switching in and out. Togekiss and Cinderace definitely do not appreciate rocks. Um, so Avalog is going to be able to Rapid Spin away those rocks against most things. I guess we did have hazard control in Cinderace, so now I guess we have two forms. Um, but this is, you know, the standard get rid of hazards kind of control, which is obviously super, super clean. We're going to throw off avalanches, which is obviously super, super nice because we can double that power if we are hit first. Uh, body press is an amazing move on this thing because we have, what is it, base 184 physical defense. So coming off that um, defense set, going into a body press, obviously going to be super clean. Do we have access to curse this generation? We do have access to curse so we can boost up. Uh, alongside, you know, like a recover set. We do have access to that reliable recovery, which is also super, super clean. Access to Earthquake um, as well to hit other steel types, which is super great for us. Um, but Rapid Spin, Recover, Avalanche, Body Press is kind of going to be more or less what you're going to see most of the time. But um, obviously super, super great for Avalanche. This is a, another good mod to give us some hazard control. It's a mod that really appreciates that new item in Heavy Duty Boots, just as our Cinderace and Tokyo's do potentially. So you might see that more than once ran in our teams this uh, season right here. But I really think Avalanche was a great tier four for us. It gave us, some, uh, again, more of a defensive backbone against those, uh, you know, strong physically offensive mods. We have a great team that done them now, obviously, in Avalanche, which is great for us. So really, really glad we were able to nab this guy. Next up, I went down and I grabbed my boy Galarian Stunfisk. I'm a big fan of regular Stunfisk and Draft. I think is incredibly underrated and I had to give um, Galarian Stunfisk a shot. It is a ground and steel type. So I originally wanted Steelix in the slot, but unfortunately got sniped for me right before this. So I went with Galar Stunfisk because it does have the uh, same kind of premise. It does get rocks. It is um, pretty decently strong in 81 attack and it has decent enough bulk. 
uh, with access to, I believe it still gets pain split. Yes, it does. I do not sound stupid, which obviously is super clean. Foul play and sucker punch. Um, sucker punch is great just for that priority option. And foul play to stop physical setup on us uh, if something thinks that we're going to be too passive for it. Access to Thunder Wave. Uh, we actually have access to Skull, which is pretty funny. I don't know exactly why. But uh, this is going to be a nice little low tier Mon Force to pick up. I believe it's a tier 4 Mon. Just to, uh, you know, be able to, uh, you know, check some physically offensive Mons, get us some Rock types, stop those uh, electric that have some Volt switching all over us, which is obviously super, super clean. And it is a ground type that is not weak to ice. It does take it neutrally, but I think that's really nice for us to have because we do have a uh, pretty, you know, ice weak team um, just overall right now. So I really do appreciate having that, uh, you know, that ground type that's not weak to ice or weak to uh, grass, which is really cool for those uh, coverage moves that might want to come our way. So yeah, really excited to use Galarian Sophus actually. I had a lot of, I got a lot of crowd from a couple buddies for drafting this guy, but I'm really excited. I hope he does some work here um, in the upcoming season. I think it'll be pretty decent. Next up, we ended up drafting Araquanid. Now, Araquanid gave us our bulky water type, which is very, very important in the league format, in my opinion. While uh, Araquanid may not be the most reliable bulky water because it does lack that reliable recovery, it's very, very strong. It is very, uh, very, very bulky, and Water Bubble is an amazing ability, allowing us to avoid those burns. We have a fat spit of stat and a pretty, pretty good defensive stat as well. And this also gives us Sticky Web. Um, I really want Sticky Web this team. I want Gengar to shine. And if we can stop those Scarfers from outspeeding us by getting up webs, that's obviously like phenomenal for us. So I will definitely take that 100% of the time. Uh, liquidations from this thing are not going to tickle with that water bubble boost. And, uh, you know, potentially with the choice band slapped on top of it. Uh, this thing's going to hit really hard. It's going to pivot into things. Uh, potentially, I, I can see Rest Talk coming for us. I really do uh, appreciate Rest Talk Raquinet. I think it's a very, very solid set. Um, access to Lunge and Leech Life for it. Uh, bug Stab, uh, Poison Dab is a nice little coverage move for it, uh, as well as Crunch, stuff like that. We can even go Scald with Water Bubble, uh, just simply because it just jacking up uh, a pretty decent amount. Yeah, power is times two, which is pretty insane. So we're gonna be able to hit things really hard with Raquinet. We're gonna get us some sticky webs so that our offensive threats uh, can not fear uh, being outsped as much, especially getting Garp, which is obviously super, super plain. So I really think Araquanid does gel with the team very, very well. It gave me my bulky water. It gave me some webs. Um, I think it's uh, definitely solved for the build we have. However, we have a bulky water, but the GDL, I haven't really said anything about it yet, but we are actually allowing tier five Dynamax Captain. So one of your tier five picks, whether it be the only one you get, or if you get two, you can designate them as a Dynamax Captain, kind of like how you would do so with a uh, Z Captain or, you know, uh, drafting your Mega Slot, more so the Z Captain uh, comparison. Let's go with that. I feel like it's a little bit more kind of akin to what we're doing. So when I was looking at tier five, I wanted to grab a tier five Pokemon that I felt could do the best in a Dynamax uh, situation in facilitating a sweep against my opponent um, and really taking advantage of the bust that they can to Dynamax. So what I ended up doing is we ended up doubling up typings here, but I really don't think it's going to matter too much. We ended up drafting Kingler. Now, if you don't know, Kingler is incredibly strong. It has base 130 attack on top of access to sheer force. And it does have a couple moves that just do take advantage of it, um, being potentially stuff like Rock Slide. And just Rock Slide it. It's not about liquidation. Uh, liquidation obviously is boosted by sheer force as well because we do have that 20 percent chance to lower the target defense by one so sheer force life orb kingler off that 130 attack is not going to tickle in the slightest it is going to hurt we can even go mix with like ice beam for those grass types just because again sheer force does boost you up by a good amount with the life orb plus the ability which is great and it has access to agility which i think is really really nice for this thing because it is pretty uh pretty mediocre speed wise at base 75 but you double that and you're outspeeding most scarfers and say you dynamax up you throw off a max fight with your um brick break slash super power most of the time probably super power uh, but i guess if you don't want the drops you can totally do brick break but you throw off that um that z fight move with your super power you get off a big chunk plus you get up to plus one is that's going to be amazing this thing's going to be an absolute threat I really do think this thing is going to be one of my kill leaders this season. Uh, that might be a little bit of a stretch, but I really, really do think it. It also gets access to slower stance to break through slower teams. Um, knock off. It gets high horsepower. I don't think it gets earthquake. I should, I should check it. Yeah, it gets high horsepower to, um, you know, hit uh, mons with that ground type coverage, which is obviously super, super clean. Rock slide to take advantage of sheer force, like I said before. 
And yeah, I really do think Kingler is going to be one of the better Dynamax captains in this league. Hopefully, we can use it to our advantage. It's going to get decently bulky after that Dynamax 2, uh, taking our very bad uh, 55 HP and bringing it all the way up to 110, which is super solid with our base 115 uh, defense. And it's going to make our bad, bad 50s for death uh, somewhat usable. So we'll be able to survive probably pretty much any one hit and uh, really, really go crazy on our opponents. So I, again, think King Lord is going to be an absolutely amazing time. I can't wait to, you know, try and show how broken this mechanic is going forward. But yeah, it's going to be King Lair. With our second to last pick, um, I hadn't picked up a dragon type, so I really wanted to do so. And I actually had a decent amount of points left over in the way that we had drafted up to this point. So I ended up picking up Hackerus. Hackerus. Oh my gosh, that was awful. Uh, but I ended up picking up Haxorus. Haxorus is an absolute demon. I love using this thing in draft. It is so strong. People look at it and they think DD, and that's about it. Uh, but we forget that Sword Stance Haxorus is killing everything it's attacking. Base 147 attack, obviously super, super clean. Mold Breaker and Unnerf, both two great abilities in draft. Mold Breaker ignoring those um, effects of, other, uh, of those abilities, being it unaware or being it like levitate on that rogue and heat. Unnerve, stopping those Pokemon from eating those resist barriers in front of us so we can blow through them. If a uh, fairy type wants to bring can be a berry for our poison jab, we're going to be able to blow through that at plus one or plus two. Dragon Dance and Swords Dance for setup. It actually got a new toy in close combat this generation, which is really cool. And first impression for priority, which is actually really cool as well. If we can catch something off guard, go for a like, you know, a life orb first impression, which bring like life orb four attacks hatchers. That's obviously super, super dope. Um, Earthquake for Steel types as long as that, as well as that close combat has access to Taunt, which is really cool. Um, just yeah, Dragon Claw, Dragon Dance, you know, just the standard DD Sweeper type moveset. But this thing is really, really strong, and with web support, SD is going to be very, very scary for our opponents to deal with. And we can make it decently bulky enough to pretty much eat any one hit. So Haxorus is looking very, very solid in this build. I'm actually really excited that I got this. I think it's going to be a great breaker. I think it's going to be a great win con in specific games. Um, so I'm really excited to use this guy, and he most definitely will be shiny because I think shiny Haxorus is super clean. I love this way this mod looks. But yeah, that's going to be Haxorus. And looking at the final pick of our GDL Season 1 draft, um, I was lacking two types, and I was kind of looking through, and I kind of wanted to grab at least one of them to see which one we needed more. Um, number one, the one I thought we needed the most um, after a little bit of deliberation, was going to be a dark type. I don't want to be the guy that loses to Double Dance Raider Plus. Eh, I don't. <laughs> it's just not a fun time. I don't want to have to play that live and upload it. It's just not going to be a good time, so I want to make sure that that thing can't as easily run that Asimer stored power call mindset. Uh, same with any other bulky psychic. I don't want to be bulky psychic fodder um, to where if they get in on the right thing, they start setting up, we just lose the game. So I wanted to get that dark type. And I also wanted a fighting type. I wanted something to help break through those steals a little bit better because minus Cinderace um, and I guess Sunfisk, we rely on a lot of coverage to break through those bulky steals and a lot of pivoting and a lot of slow chipping. So I wanted something to um, break through those with their stab, and I thought fighting was going to be obviously really, really nice for that. Um, and I feel like we have good checks to uh, other typings besides Psychic at this point that uh, would check those, uh, you know, offensive fightings, being those fairy types and stuff like that. So I ended up grabbing um, a Pokemon that actually fit both of those typings perfectly. We actually have leftover points in this draft. I could have grabbed a tier three Pokemon. I believe it was Scrap was tier four. I just said it out loud. Uh, I believe this point, I believe it was Scrafty, which is going to be our next pick, because I said that out loud, um, is tier four. So we had a little bit of points left over, but I really do think Scrafty fit the team best out of whatever was left on the board. It gave me that dark type, so I'm not weak, um, as weak to those bulky sexes. This is the most reliable dark type. You know, it's still not going to appreciate those uh, straight focus blasts and stuff like that. But we are very, very bulky on the Spadef side. 65 HP is meh, but we do have that 115 Spadef. So with an AV, we're going to be chewing hits. We have access to Intimidate and Moxie, which are great, great abilities. Shed Skin is very useful as well if we want to go for like a Rest Dog Wolf upset. Um, so three useful abilities, in fact, in the draft format, which is obviously super, super great. It did lose Knock Off this generation, which really does suck. Losing Knock Off is big for this guy, but we still do have access to Crunch for Reliable. Um, you know, reliable stab from the dark side. And we're going to be able to throw off big close combats, throw off big drain punches, um, really put on a lot of offensive pressure on our opponent's team. I believe we have access to... Why do I think... Okay, I'm not going to lie. I totally thought Scrafty got Dragon Tail for some reason. 
Uh, maybe that was an old gen move. Um, but nonetheless, we have access to Dragon Dance. We have access to Bulk Up, which is obviously super, super clean. This thing can boost up and win games depending on the matchup. We are obviously that quad weak to fairy typing, but we have ways to pivot around that, hopefully. We have a Gengar to pressure, though, so I think it actually pairs pretty, pretty well with Gengar in that respect. Um, we have access to Elemental Punches and Fire Ice and Thunder, Poison Jab and Iron Head for those fairy types on the Switch, and I think they can jump in on us. We have access to Taunt for those bulky Psychics that I want to start setting up and uh, being a very, very obnoxious, which is really, really cool. Throw Chop is another option for our Dark Step if we want to catch like a Sylveon that we think isn't going to run, that we think is going to run, you know, Pixelate Hyper Voice. We'll be able to pretty much essentially wall that with a nice uh, Throw Chop. So that's obviously super, super great for us. Maybe I should have said that loud. I don't know who gets Sylveon, but I hope they don't watch my video. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be Scrafty. I think it fits the team very, very well. It gives us that bulky Psychic check, which is obviously the best thing. Um, and it does give us that Fighting type, which our team lacked up at this point as well. But yeah, that is going to be our GDL Season 1 draft analysis. Again, huge shout-outs to the Commissioners for allowing me in the league. I really do appreciate it. I hope to make the best of the opportunity. I hope uh, we do very, very well in this league. I'm definitely going to take it uber serious. I mean, I guess we do that with all our leagues. I'm a little... A little too sweaty for my own good sometimes, but we're gonna do our best to try and um, you know, make a real playoff push towards that champion stuff like that. I think we do have the team. I really like the way it looks on paper initially. I'm sure we'll see a bunch of holes as prep and matchups kind of roll through and all that stuff. But until then, I think we should be okay. I'm really, really excited to use this build. So. Hopefully it goes well for me. But yeah, that's going to be our draft analysis. If you guys did enjoy and you are new here, be sure to subscribe. We have lots and lots of content going up, being this every week now, um, as well as a bunch of Wi-Fi battles, draft league study series, you know, a bunch, a bunch of stuff. So uh, if you did enjoy, please, please consider dropping a like and sticking around. But with that being, oops, accidental abrupt ending, but like I was trying to say, thank you guys again for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. But with that being said, I'm going to actually sign off this time later.